Uh, and we will get started at 2.30. Okay. I'll let you in about uh, maybe 10 minutes. Uh, 2.20. Okay. So you can be ready to begin at 2.30. Uh, okay. Why were you asking about the free lab? Well, there's a lot of uh, background knowledge we need to fit the lab that we haven't covered in lecture yet. So I'm wondering uh -huh. Sierra chemistry? Yes. Okay. You got your textbook. All right. Uh, we'll be moving to stereochemistry uh, soon. I say soon. We got a lot of alkene reactions to cover. Okay. Uh, other questions for, before we begin? Um, excuse me. So yes. there was, I think maybe there's some concerns about, you know, I guess we were halogenating with um, Cl2 versus just Cl. Uh, in our in our lab, or it would be bromine in this case in our lab, correct? Uh -huh. um, so I guess, not to put words in my friend's mouth, but maybe there's some concerns about not understanding those concepts. So you're suggesting we just garner all, all that knowledge from the book, and you're not going to... No, we'll, we'll be covering it. Okay. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Yep, and you can be looking ahead. Okay, let's get going, guys. Carbocation rearrangements. Uh, one thing that carbocations are prone to doing, and we see lots of carbocations, is they're prone to rearranging. What is that? You can rearrange by a hydride shift or an alkyl shift. Look at this example. You take this alkene, reacting with HBr. It's actually two different products, one minor, one major. Minor product we can envision. Where, where are you going to make cation at, top or bottom? Bottom. 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 Bottom, secondary, and then Br minus the text carbocation. You can envision how we get that minor product. Hopefully, yes. I think it's a major product. Let's look at that. Well, mechanism, right? We can show this ionic. By the way, uh, recrystallization lab sheet. Yeah. Uh, we can say that would be due. Monday here in class, okay? I'm sure you could probably turn it in here in lab, but uh, we'll do Monday here in class. Is that good? Uh, alkene attacks H+, yeah? Uh, boop, 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 boop. New H there, yeah? So we can show that bond being made, carbocation here. Yeah? High bond here, it swings out and goes make bond to H leaving the lower carbon as a plus because it lost the bond. Uh, Br minus could attack here, that would give the minor product. I'm not going to show that mechanism. Straightforward, yeah? yeah? How do we get major? Well, let's look at it. Uh, seems like the Br ends up bonded here, yeah? yeah. Um, how many H's on this carbon? Two. Two. One. Still one. How many there now? Two. two. Now two there. Where did that come from? How many H's on this carbon? One. One. Still one. How many H's on the carbon now? Zero. Zero. One H has moved over. Next door. Okay. We draw this H in here. And we need to if we're going to show a bond moving, if we're going to show a mechanism. What happens here is this H, by the way, what type of carbocation is this? Secondary. These electrons break free from this carbon and migrate over. Okay, here we go. Here's my finger. Somebody pull my finger over there, okay? Grab it. There you go. That's what your arrow is going to do. Grab it, pull it over there. All right, here we go. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to pull it over there. The arrow is we're moving the electrons over. The, the nucleus comes with it. We're moving the electrons, the two electrons. What does that arrow movement give? Gives new H over there. How many bonds to this carbon now? It just lost a bond. There's only three there. There's no H there anymore, right? It moved over. It's gone. 
Thus, there is a positive charge there now. You've got to keep track of H's. Okay? Why didn't I draw the new one in up there? The original new one. Because I'm only going to do that the first time. If I draw 10 different steps, I'm not going to keep drawing in the new H. It's not drawn in there either. There's a new H on the end. There's a new H on the end. I drew it there because it, that, it was just placed there. Got to know where H's are at and how I'm doing this. Okay? But that H, if I can underline it or whatever you want, is now that one. Yeah? Okay. Why would it do that, first off? We went from a secondary, what type of cation now? Tertiary. We went from a, to a tertiary carbocation. Better carbocation. Carbocations will rearrange to become better, more stable. Right? We should understand why tertiary is more stable. What moved over? The H. What do we call H? The H moved plus the two electrons there. They're bonding electrons there. If we showed them as a lone pair, what would you call H with two electrons? Is that a hydride? Hydride. What do you call chlorine with? By the way, what would the charge be here if this was a something? Minus one. Yes, it'd be minus, but H only has one electron there. It's two, one extra, two minus. What do you call Cl when it's a minus? Chloride. Chloride. Bromide. Hydride. Okay. It's as if the H and the two electrons shifted. It's a hydride shift. If we call that one, it shifted next door to two. That's not nomenclature. That's just if it, we call that one, where did it go next door is two. So this is called a one, two, hydride shift. And you already had a risen there. It's up there. Yeah? Secondary to tertiary. Carbocations are prone to rearranging. Okay? Why would it do this? Okay? Here we go. I'm a H bonded to carbon. Can I bond to you? Over here. Oh, there's a cation next door. Yeah? Right now you're secondary, okay? These are, these are electrons here. Are the electrons going to be attracted to the positive charge? Yes, physics, I recommend that course, okay? Ooh, the electrons start going over here towards the plus. Wow, I'm sorry, I'm, just, I'm going over here. I'm going to go bond to you. The electrons break away, why? Because when I move over here, you're tertiary now. You're more stable, everything's better, okay? The electrons get attracted over there and they actually break free. Why? Better. This is actually equilibrium. Many of our steps are equilibrium. Okay? It can come back. Hey, you're a plus. These are bonding electrons are attracted. Oops, sorry. Boop. Okay? And there's a transition state there, right? Between one, okay? But which is favorite? Secondary or tertiary? Tertiary, so it's going this way, all right? And so this is this is very small, all right? Many steps are, are equilibrium, and I usually don't discuss that. Usually we're going forward, all right? At this point, how do we get major product? Pretty easy from now, right? The R minus that was attacking, bam, right there, right? Now what does that give? Does that give major product? Do I see it? The H's are all there. Right? There's one new H on the end. There's a new H there that came from there that was missing an H. There you go. Uh, how many intermediates in this reaction? Two. A secondary carbocation and then a tertiary carbocation. If we did a reaction for the diagram, what would that look like? A, B, C, D. We have A, B. Okay, I'm not going to uh, finish. Uh, you know, if you're going to do something formal, whatever, you need to have the axis label here. I'm just doing it quick. A, B. From B, where do we put C here compared to B? A little lower. And then D. Okay, we'll come way down here. And here we go. I'm going to put this below here. B, C, D. 
yeah? And then the hydride shift takes a little bit of energy, yeah? And then, bam. Great turning step. Yeah? Formation of the original carbocation, typically the rate determining step. Pretty straightforward. Just like before, what's new here? Carbocation rearrangement. Sometimes called a skeletal rearrangement. The arrow shows movement of what? Electrons. Electrons. So don't do this on the quiz. Don't say, hey, the plus charge moves here. Errors, mechanism errors don't show where charges move. Don't do this. Don't say, hey, the H moves here. No. Because every time you do a mechanism error, you start by saying what? These, these electrons. electrons. If you're saying these electrons, why would you? There's no electrons over here moving. The electrons are right here in the bond. Okay? And if you want full credit for mechanism errors, you'll have the correct arrow. Uh, there you go. Anytime you can do a rearrangement, we typically will do that and say that's the major pathway and thus that's the major product because this would be expected to rearrange from secondary to tertiary. Everybody good? Carbocation rearrangement. How about the reaction below? If you take this alkene react it with aqueous acid, of course this looks like a hydration reaction, right? If you give an alcohol. But we're going to make cation, top or bottom? Bottom. Bottom. Water attacks carbocation, loses an H from oxygen, maybe this alcohol. But that's minor product. The major product is over here. How did the OH become bonded to that carbon? Well, it's a carbocation rearrangement. This is not a hydride ship. Uh, we've got H plus and water, right? This can attack. We will leave carbocation here. It's secondary. I agree. Same as before, we just have an extra methyl over here. Uh, what are carbocations probably doing? Rearranging. Could this rearrange to a tertiary? See this more substituted site over here? What can shift over? There's no H here to shift over. But actually a carbon can shift. And the carbon is more than just a carbon. It's got three H's. We call the CH3 a methyl. Okay. Which one? Any, any three of them. Okay. Here we go. Somebody pull my finger over. Grab it, pull it over, and let's go bond over there. Here we go. I'm going to do this. What does that give? Now an extra methyl over there. Okay. Got to be a charge, right? We don't just all, all of a sudden go from a positive to a neutral. Where's the charge? On the left of carbocation. Right here? No. no. Left. Well, no, it doesn't that's, a, that's a can of worms. Because actually, you can say yes, because that's the same thing as if we drew it here. It's just flipped around. Uh, it's here, because this lost a bond. you got to keep track of this. Because how many H's are here? Two. Same number that are there. One, one, there's three bonds, that's why it's a plus. There's still one H there, there's four bonds, it's neutral. Okay? You can't keep uh, recommending to keep track of your H's. It's a common problem. Okay? Everybody good? What's next? We went from secondary to what? Tertiary. Tertiary. What type of shift do we do here? To the At the top, I have what we call it. Alkyl. We just call it an alkyl because a methyl, ethyl, propyl, these are alkane groups. We call them alkyl groups. Okay. 
You could maybe hydride, you maybe call this carbide. We just don't use that term. Maybe a meth methide, methylide. I've seen that maybe once. Basically, just call it here an alkyl mixture. Sometimes I've seen alkalide before. You don't hear that much. Usually, you just say alkyl. Alkyl shift, specifically a methyl shifted over. Okay, secondary tertiary. We're going downhill now. Yeah. Okay. Like we went downhill. How do you get final product? Major product. Water, which is here. Yeah. These electrons make bond here. Yeah. Okay. And you can finish it up. And usually multiple arrows. Okay. I've already done that in previous mechanism. Water attacks, and then you have a second step. We talked about that. Something takes the H. Okay. Previous mechanism. Um, and I have to be compelled to say that if you were given a mechanism on a test, you would not just say the rest is there. <laughs> you would give a complete mechanism, okay? Now, if we do this reaction ten times, I'm not going to give the same mechanism over and over and over and over because that's, that's a whole lecture right there. If you've already done the mechanism, you refer back to it. We're doing the new part here. Alkyl shift, carbocation rearrangements, that's how you get major product here. Everybody good? And this is actually a minor product. Now, this product, uh, later on we will do oxymercuration. Oxymerc. That would be another way to hydrate alkenes. And when we hydrate that way, you don't get rearrangement. And if you don't get a rearrangement, the minor product would indeed be the major product. Okay? So you can go ahead and put that in your notes and we'll see that later. And we'll say, hey, guess what? Remember last time it rearranged? Well, what if you didn't want the rearrangement? You couldn't use HVO plus because it will rearrange, but you could use this other method. All right? Oxymercuration. Uh, how about over here? We have a ring and an alkene. The alkene is a reactivity. Uh, if you react this with HBr, you go from a 4 to a 5 member ring. What's going on here? Well, the reactivity is the alkene, right? Hydrocarbon doesn't going to do anything. Not with HBr. Uh, what are you going to make count on at top and bottom? Bottom. These electrons attack here, and we end up with new H there and plus here. Everybody agree? Everybody seeing this? These electrons swing out. Which carbon is making bond to H, bottom or top? Top. Top. Well, Dr. Stevens, why are you drawing the line, the arrow from the bottom carbon? That's because here, open the gate. If you want to open the gate, you pull over here, right, and it, and it hinges out this way, right? I've got a gate. I pull over here. It's connected over here. It broke away from this end, this pole over here. Right? This is how we do mechanism arrows. You can get little books on just moving mechanism arrows. I think there's one in the library. If you look at the syllabus, I mentioned a couple books in the library. Okay. Well, BR minus could attack here, yeah. That's physics. But that don't get that brother. 
you get that from? This is called a ring expansion. If I agree, if 4 goes to 5, it expanded. Okay. Well, it could shift over. This methyl could shift. Let's do that. What if the methyl broke away and these electrons moved here? Now I'm going to call that the A arrow. What would that give? Well, the ring hasn't done anything. We have boom, boom, new H there. And new methyl where? Now over here? Okay. Can I just draw another methyl there? And where's the positive? Where, you going? where the methyl left? A? That would be a methyl shift. It's possible. We went from secondary to what? Tertiary. Tertiary, yeah. But the ring is still four, not five. Is there something else that could break free from this carbon if we wrote? And the answer is yes, right here. Somebody pull my finger. Over there. We take this and break free, we call that B. What would, what would the B give? Instead of here, don't do this. Instead of there, it's going to break away. These electrons break away from that carbon and bond there. All right? Here we go. Back and forth. It just went, boop, came over here and bonded. Electrons did. Where's the plus now? Well, the carbon it left from, right there. There you go. Now this is kind of an alkyl shift, but it's part of this ring. Then we call this a uh, ring expansion. Because that's a four. What size ring do we have now? That's a five. Now if we clean this up, that's a five-numbered ring. I can draw it more like this, a little more common with two methyls adjacent to each other, if I agree, and a positive charge. Now you don't have to redraw this. You can say, that's it right there. I mean, the bond angle is a little ugly. How do you get final product? Well, your minus has been watching it, and bam! What does that give? That gives product, there you go. Could B or minus have attacked here? We could have, and that would have given maybe a minor product. But what do we say for us here in this class? Anytime you can rearrange to a better carbocation, we're going to do it. Is that better carbocation? It's in a ring. Tertiary, yes. What's another reason that one's better than this one? It's, it's in a ring. ring. It's in a ring. What's the best size rings? Five and six. Five and six. Also, the ring got better. Another favorable, energetic thing. That, okay? Reaction coordinate diagram, we first formed this. Then we fell downhill to a better carbocation. More substituted by induction and a better ring size. Then the BR minus attacks and we get home. Yeah? Ring expansion. BR minus could also maybe attack here. This could be maybe a minor product, but uh, we are attacking here. Now this is tertiary, but which is better? Tertiary over there or this one? That one, because it's a better sized ring. So, so we're going to say that's a preferred pathway. Uh, down below, it's not a ring expansion, but a what? A contraction. 
great contraction. See, try that one on your own. Get your original carbocation, and then look for a rearrangement. But more in particular, moving the electrons and showing that rearrangement. You can also back this up. Does, does everybody agree that probably, 100% probably, you need that carbocation? So we'll do it again. And then what attacks this carbocation to eventually give that product? Water. Yeah. Do you see how that is sort of, you need that along the way? That's a strategy sometimes. You can look and say, okay, what if I kind of, I know that to get this product, carb, water attacks carbocation, so it must be this. And you can kind of then come forward and sort of get to this. And then if you get to this, you know you're home free. Because that's just water attacking and then you lose a proton. Okay, try that one on your own. I actually sent out the key to that and the uh, THC mechanism, don't look at it until you try it. Okay, you got to first try the THC before you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that's on the next page. Yep. Okay, um, we've seen an alkene attack in H. Plus. Could it attack some other plus? Right here, alkene attacked H plus, and that's all we've attacked this for. Organizing your reactions, seeing the consistencies. And yes, the consistency is, as we explained over here, okay? Romeo number one, these are reactions with what? H plus. Okay. Now, there's no extra charge for all this nice outlines here, okay? That's for your benefit. Alright? If you want. If you want. Okay. In addition to H plus, could it attack a C plus? A carbocation, right? C plus. Why not? Physics doesn't discriminate between H and C. It's plus, plus, plus. Yes. H I. H plus I minus. Okay. There's no C plus here. H plus. Yes. Where are you going to make cation at? Left, right, left, right. We have four choices. Two alkenes. It's the same question though. Where's the best place to make a carbocation for one of these alkenes? The tertiary. Right here. Everybody agree? Bam. This attacks and we get boom, 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 boom. UH here, carbocation there. Two problems. First off, many of you could not show that, even if given 15 minutes. You got to be able to do that. We've already done that six to ten times. Moving that electric pipe bond to attack it. The gate swinging open to make bond to H. 15 minutes. Another problem. Maybe you're frantically writing to write that down. So if we go from 15 minutes to 5 seconds. That makes it even more difficult. Okay? I see lots of, lots of you come by and I see your notes and I'm like, oh, that's wrong, that's wrong. You're not writing things down right in class. You've got to realize this. Because once you write it down wrong and then you study it wrong, everything's wrong. But I can't, I can't take 15 minutes to draw that because we've got to move ahead. What are the benefits of video? But also realize that. Don't be so quick to be writing things down. Sometimes you maybe just want to, okay, watch. Don't get caught up in writing things down and then you can't listen and, okay, just to comment on, okay, how are you approaching and, and, and interacting? Right? I sense that some of you are just trying to write and then you just miss everything. 
I don't know the answer. Find the note that works for you. And don't get into that missing it because you're trying to write everything down. Okay. Uh, here we go. But again, it's the same old thing. So if it's the same old thing, do you really have to be quick to write everything down? And you can maybe fill in the blanks after class. Go sit down and then you fill it in. All right. What, what can attack the plus here? Well, there's an I minus by green. But if that attacked here, you wouldn't get that from. We're actually making a ring here. What can attack there? An alkene. You got another alkene. Can an alkene attack the plus? It just did there. It doesn't matter that it's a carbon plus. It can attack. This would be internal. Can that alkene attack here? Can this hand clap this hand? <laughs> These bonds can all rotate. What if we redraw this? Okay? That's usually my indication for some type of rotation or something. Alright? What if we redraw this? Um, alkene, carbon, 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 alkene. Carbon, carbon, carbon. Now I could draw this a number of ways. Equal. Oh, then the H gone. Here, let's get rid of the H. Sometimes it looks peculiar anyway. That H is there. Are these two the same thing? They should be. Alkene, then one, two, three plain carbons. Alkene, one, two, three. And then a carbon that has two methyls, positive charge. Well, guess what? Now this alkene here. It's sitting right here, and look, somebody pulled my finger. Pull it down and make bond. Pull these electrons down. What size ring do we want? Six more. Pull that down. Bam. And that would give what? What bond did we just make here? Right there, right? The electrons were up here. They broke away from this carbon and went down and made bond down there. Yeah? Where's the plus now? Up here, where the electrons broke away. That pi bond was here. It broke away up there and went down and made that new bond. There's your six-membered ring. Alkene attacks the carbocation internally. Intramolecular. How do you get final product? I minus. It's just been rotated around, but I minus has been watching this whole time. Okay. Bam. What does that give? That's product. It's just been turned around, but it's a so cyclohexane, two methyls on one carbon, nothing, and then iodine. Two methyls, nothing, then iodine. It's just been rotated. So. so this is illustrating how King attacking the C plus. It came after originally the alkene attack with H plus. Ring formation. It's our first ring forming reaction. THC mechanism, also a ring forming, right here, no ring. 
This ring here, look at that six. See that new six membered ring? Two rings over there, now three. Something else attacks carbocation there, not alkene, but very analogous to previous reactions. See what's going on there. Polymerization. It's an alkene detecting a carbon plus, carbocation. Responding to what in my mechanism? Which, which letters are bonding to what? Something's bonding to B. Which, which one's bonding to B? F. F. 
This is E. My body's F. This comes over here. The arm is bonded to my body, F. Let's see what this may give here. Uh, we got to kind of put this together. Here's the bond we just made. And B has what? That's there with an H. We just made this bond. And this here is carbon F. And we have E, D. What we got here? A, B, C, F, E, D. We just made a bond between F and B. We said, right? You gotta, you gotta hook that together. Everybody with me? Where's the cation at now? Because if a neutral reaction to plus, you're gonna make a plus. You can't just get rid of a charge. Where's the plus? E. E, yes. Everybody agree? attack the, the plus on the E. Another alkene. Uh, I feel like I want to draw it up here. Where are we going to cat at it? Left or right? Okay. Left. G H I. Electrons swing down here. What bond is making, what, what atom is making bond to E? I. I, leaving cation where? H. H. Let's draw that here. Uh, over here, I've got two methyls. I got here, boom, boom. I got a new bond here. And that is. I, I is bonded to H and G. G, H, I, and this was E here. You can label the rest. Where's cation? H. There's a new H out here, right? That was the original new H. We'll draw it in. What can attack this cation? Somebody stop me. Yes. A gazillion times. Over and over and over. Guess what? You take that alkene, you drip in one little drop of acid, and bam, a gazillion reactions right there. Speed of light. Bam, polymer form. Question. Why do they want to since they're neutral? Like, is it just because, hey, we're electrons and we just like positive charges, so we're just going to confine them, even if they're already busy interacting right there? This, why would this react? Yeah. Okay, fundamental question. We said that early on. The pi bond is a source of reactivity. The electrons are not held tightly. Okay, just because they will busy. react with positive things, okay. electrophiles. Pi bonds are reactive enough. Even if they're already interacting with other things? Yes. Okay. Sigma bonds are much stronger and less reactive. Pi bond is a source of reactivity. It's almost like the electrons are almost, they're somewhere between bonding and lone pairs. They're loosely held bonding pairs. And with strong enough electrophile, H plus is, carbocation is, you w this will polymerize. And this is the mechanistic theory for how the reaction happens. Okay, somebody stop me. Yes, what do we have here? This is where it started at, right here. It started here. What do we have? Repeating unit. Uh, we have a carbon methyl CH2. Uh, no, that's not, that's not the bond we made. So that's not the repeating unit. The bond we made was here. First carbon. First carbon is a CH2. CH3 with that H there. CH2 carbon methyl. CH2 carbon methyl. CH2 carbon methyl. If you keep on, it'll be the same old thing. CH2 carbon methyl. 
So it's right there in CH2 carbon methyl. Same thing I got here. CH2 carbon methyl, CH2 carbon methyl. And that's how you show it. It'll just be a gazillion miles long. And we call that a polymer. And you need to be able to see how the repeating unit is formed and what is the repeating unit. This reaction was initiated by this H right there. That was the initiator. Uh, it's a cation. That's why this is called a cationic polymerization. If this was an anion, this would be called what type of polymerization? Anion. If it was a radical, it would be called a radical polymerization. This is a cationic polymerization because the H plus cation initiated. Polymers, take a look. What did we polymerize? What was the name of that compound? Propene. Propene is, is a slang name for that is propylene. Somehow the L got added in. Slang name. Propylene. And if you polymerize propylene, what do you get? Polypropylene. Okay? This may be polypropylene right here. Polymers. We got chemistry. Huge. Polymer chemistry, huge field. Okay. Next reaction, addition of H2 to alkenes. We have an outline. Where are we at on the outline? Uh, carbocation rearrangement, polymerization. By the way, a ring forming reaction. We saw alkene attacking. Other nucleophile attacking. Okay? going to be a THC mechanism as an example. Take a look at that. Other new blue box. Polymerizations, propylene acid catalyst. But we want to use an acid catalyst that doesn't contain water. If you use water, it'll attack the cation, right? If water was around, it would attack here. Instead, if we want polymerization, we want the alkene to attack. So it's best to have no water. So you want to use a dry acid. The only dry acid we've seen thus far is HF. I reckon it's pretty dry. There, there are acids here. The main thing is understanding that if you have water, it's going to be a competing nucleophile. B. Electrophilic conditions without a carbocation intermediate. And the first one is addition of halogen. Primarily Cl2 or Br2. We're using Br2 in lab this week. Chlorine. It looks like it's nonpolar, but it actually is schizophrenic. It's easily polarized. Okay. Very polarizable. Has to be induced. Induced dipole. So it's not permanently. Okay? Halogens are known to be pretty polarizable. Interacting with other things. Even like interacting with oxygen, it'll make it polarized. Induced. Okay? That's how you have to get reactivity. High electrons will attack the uh, fluorine and kick the other one off. Cl2, Br2, not ionic. They're covalent. So you have to do it like this. We're not showing Cl plus, not a formal charge. Ultimately, the, we're adding chlorine across the pi bond. We're attaching the chlorine to each carbon of the alkene. So that's pretty darn easy in terms of just what's being formed. Put a halogen on each carbon. But what is the mechanism? And also, what is the stereochemistry that would arise from this reaction? And that's largely what the lab is about this week.
Now this attack, where are you going to leave cation at? Left or right? Left. 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 And so if this attacks and makes bond to chlorine, cation here, you've got carbon chlorine bond. You can also form chloride here. Then that could turn around and attack here. And you get your product. Chloride attacks here. Okay? So I go attack chlorine carbon chlorine bond, and then the chloride that was formed comes back and attacks the other carbon. Product, yes. Problem is that's not the mechanism. For a variety of reasons. The first reason is, which chlorine mon pair is closer to the cation? The one that's bonded next door, or the other one that's not bonded? That's not bonded. Which one's closer? Bonded. Oh. Here, let's clap hands. Can you clap my hand? Okay. Go. You didn't even move an hour. <laughs> Why took you so long? This is faster, right? Because I'm right here. Bam. That's faster. This chlorine attacking, bam. This guy didn't have a chance to even move. Internal is always faster. So it doesn't make any sense that that's going to attack. Let me break in some laws of physics there. I mean, it just... This one attacks, and I call that backbonding, and that's faster. And I'm the only one that calls it backbonding, but it's not going to call it backbonding. Okay, backbond. What does that give? It gives this three-membered ring here, called a chloronium ion. We'll finish this up here. Now, this is under B. What did B say? No carbocation intermediates. That's a carbocation. That's called, this is not actually formed. That's not actually formed in the mechanism. These first two steps are concerted. Okay? That's your first and only intermediate. Coronium ion. Okay, we're out of time. I'd like to continue on through here. We need to do some reading about this. We'll cover this reaction in detail, including stereochemistry on the next page. This reaction only gives, when stereochemistry is relevant, it only gives trans. Shown on the next page. We'll be reading about why. Why only trans and not cis. Next page. We'll be moving forward. We're doing this in lab this week. Uh, have a good day, guys.